again in my uni university and high school test. I tried three years for entering university. And then finally I got into the poorest university in my city, which today I believe that is the best university in the world. Hanzhou Teachers College. So I never thought I would be a teacher. I hate to be a teacher in China. A boy to be a teacher, people look down upon you at that time. So for four years, every day I thought about it is that what should I do if I graduate? I should not be a teacher. Because when you're at teacher's college, when you graduate, you have to be a teacher because the government paid the money. So when I graduated, I, I was assigned to uh, teach in a university because our university was, was supposed to train middle school teachers. 500 graduate students, uh, uh, 500 students graduate. Only one of them can be assigned to the university. 499 went to the, uni went, went, go to the uh, middle school. So I was the only one chosen to teach in the, in the university. My president, he saw me at the gate and he said, Jack, I know you will leave, but promise me in five years, teach in that university. Don't leave, Don't, just stay there. So I said, okay, president, I promise. When I joined that university, I did not know my, my pay was so bad. I uh, less than ten dollars a month, and uh, because I graduated from a very poor university, the other teachers they all from Tsinghua Beida, so I was looked down upon. But I promised for five years, so for five years I've been teaching, teaching. I worked hard, and and then I was elected by students the best teacher of the university. And then I said, okay, five years I. I kept my promise, number six, I started to love to be a teacher. And then I thought, everything I taught my students are the things I learned from books. I should leave the school, spend 10, 15 years, get all the experience, and then go back to teach. Then I could be the real, a good teacher. That was thinking. Then I went I'm to the United still, States. I'm still waiting for you. Yeah, so then I went to the United States. I found the internet. I just want to find, find a job at that time. I'm looking for a lot of jobs, all filled. People don't want, a, don't want me. They say, I know, even looking for a job in a hotel, they say, hey, you're not good looking enough. <laughs> um, so I uh, discovered the internet in Seattle, 1994 in, uh, in December. I searched the word beer. I was not, I was so scared of the computer. And my friend said, just to search whatever you want to search. At that time, there's called Lycos, the, the earliest mosaic, you know, the browser, very early days. They say you search anything. So I first word search beer. There's no beer information on the internet from China. There's a Japanese beer, German beer, US beer. And then I search China, say there's no data about China. So I thought about, hmm, if I can put some Chinese information on the web, when people find out, that might be a good opportunity. So I did not know internet would be that big. I just wanted looking for a job. That was the original thinking. I wanted to leave the school, build up something. And when I find the internet, I think if I can put Chinese company information on the internet, let the other people that do it, this might be a good future. So we thought I have a great vision for the future at the beginning just looking for a job and I don't want to be a teacher. That was the thing. I never thought we would be today. I never thought I would be today. I think uh, for my, you know, when I leave university, I thought just doing something and 10, 20 years later, I can go back to teach. I never know, I never realized I can achieve that much. When we look back today, we have uh, close to 70,000 excellent young people in my company. We have so much data, technology, inference, 700 million users. I think all the things does not belong to me. There must be something that somebody in the sky wants, Jack and your people should do something different. That was the thinking in the past 10 years always. But when our company went IPO, today we're like a $400 billion market cap. This does not belong to us. 
And why we succeed? Because we support the young people, we support the small, medium-sized companies, we support the women. And because of supporting these people, they do succeed. So we believe, how can we last our success? We believe we should support the more young people. We should support the more SMEs. We should support the more women. If they are successful, we will be successful. I believe one thing, when you have a cup of two or three million dollars, that money you belong, belong to you. When you have 20 million dollars, you have a problems about money depreciation, you buy this stock or that stock. When you have more than 100 million dollars, 1 billion dollars, that money does not belong to you. It's the social responsibility. If people trust you.